Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Well, I know that God has a, has a word for all of us, so I want you to, uh, to really just allow God to speak to your heart today. Uh, I, w- I, wanna, I want to, um, to bring out some truths that we all experience. This message is not for a person or some people. It's for all of us. We all fall into this trap. And what's the trap? The trap is this, is that we have an adversary. We all have an enemy, every single one of us. And his name is Satan. He is the adversary. He is the enemy. He comes to steal, kill, destroy. That's exactly what Jesus said. But Jesus said, but I have come to bring life. And so the challenge and the conflict is constantly the enemy trying to drive us away from the path of truth. That's what he does. He can't hurt you physically, but he can lie to you. And lies hurt. Lies really begin to form you and shape you and then begin to create a behavior. And and then that behavior becomes your belief and then your belief becomes your actions, etc., etc. And so... Uh, I, I want to hit this hard today because today is our last day of At The Movies, and I picked a perfect flick. I'm telling you, you're going to like this one. You're going to really like this one. But I, I want to bring this, 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 uh, this, this film today with, with some foundation because as you watch it, you're going you're gonna to do your homework today in-house, in-house homework. I'm going to lay a quick foundation. I'm going to read a verse, and then I want you to uh, open up your eyes and your ears, and your heart, but your spiritual ones. And I want you to begin to bring out some truths out of this film clip. And then we're going to talk about this. And I really believe that today we're all going to walk out of here with a better understanding of, uh, of an enemy who loves to bring confusion right now. Whatever you're facing right now, whatever challenge you're going through right now, let me tell you something. Satan will always find a foothold and then create a stronghold in your life. Starts with the foot. Boom, door went open, foot goes in. Once that foot goes in, boom, then he grabs you, and now he holds on strong. And so we're going to learn today how to break free from the stronghold of the enemy. Let me read you a verse because here's the, here's the reality. Jesus is preaching the gospel, and, and he has all these kind of followers. He's got people that, uh, that were uh, true believers. Then he had people that were make-believers, and then he had people that were unbelievers, and so he always had all kinds of people following him. It wasn't just believers. And so what happened was, like today, society, you know what? We all have haters in life. Anybody have a hater in life? Yeah, we all have haters. Praise God uh, for the haters. Haters make you better, actually. You know why? They challenge you to love even harder and stronger, right? Um, I remember someone used to say a statement, where there's people, there's poop. And... Uh, and but I thought that was wrong. So I say where there's people, there's an opportunity to forgive, love, and to go above and beyond. Amen? And, uh, and so Jesus is having this challenge because um, the enemy is using people to, to sway people away from the truth. And, and they're constantly saying, hey, listen, don't follow this Jesus because he's, he's, he makes up all these fantasies and, and he's not the truth. He's a liar. It's, it's, it's amazing how the enemy works in so many people's life. Not just unbelievers, but also make-believers. What are make-believers? That you're a wannabe believer. But he also hits the believer. And so we all fall into this category. And so Jesus says, you know what? Enough. I'm going to go talk to these people. So he decides to have a church on Sunday at Elevate Church. And he just starts speaking to us straight up. And here's what he says. Now listen, don't hate the messenger. Okay, I'm just the messenger. So just listen to the verse. This is Jesus himself in the red. Everybody say red. red. Don't forget that, 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 that word, red. Don't forget the red. And he says this, John 8, verse 42 through 46. And Jesus said to them, those that were tripping, if God were your father, man, you would love me. I have come here from God. I have not come on my own. God sent me. Why aren't my words clear to you? 
I'll tell you why. Look, don't you love that? That Jesus asks a question, then he answers it for you. He didn't even let you respond. He says, I'll tell you why. He says, because you can't really hear what I say. Why am I not changing? Why aren't things getting better? Because you really can't hear what he says. Stay with me. You belong to your father, the devil. That's harsh. But he's, I love, you know what? I always hear people say, you know, I like it real. Until you need to hear the real stuff, right? (laughs) Then you don't like it. He says, you know what? Your father, you're of your father, the devil. You want to obey your father's wishes. From the beginning, the devil was a murderer. He has never obeyed the truth. There is no truth in him. So he's he's immediately exposing the situation here. Look what he goes on to say. When he lies, he speaks his natural language. Language creates a culture. A culture creates a language. But because I tell the truth, you don't believe me. Can any of you prove that I'm guilty of sinning? In other words, hey, man, what's, why are you guys like, like you're hearing all these things about me, but can anyone here say that I'm sinning? And look at this. Am I not telling the truth? Then why don't you believe me? Check this out. The only point in this conversation, this dialogue, where he allows them to respond is when he says, am I not telling the truth? And the church said what? Amen. Yes, you do tell it. They said, yes, you do, that. you do tell the truth, Jesus. Then he's saying, then why aren't you believing what I'm telling you? Then what is your problem? Why are you still believing the lies? Why? And you know what? I believe that Satan takes advantage when you and I fall into moments in life with trauma. When you deal and experience trauma in any way, whether it was physical abuse, verbal abuse, whether uh, it was rape. Hey, listen, some people just have trauma. They were in a horrible accident and you've just been so traumatized that fear grips your life. And you have this lie that one day I'm going to die in a car accident. And so those are lies that the enemy grips us with. And God wants to see his people. God says, hey, listen, who's your daddy? Because daddy is either father of lies or daddy is either father of truth. And so every time we stick to the lie, guess what? He's being very clear. That's your daddy. Look at your neighbor and say, who's your poppy? (laughs) You know what? The challenge With God's people is the same challenge that Neo had, and it's called identity. A constant challenge. The world will try to give you an identity. And the matrix is the world. The world wants to confine you. The world wants to conform you, while God wants to transform you. Can you imagine when that phone rang, Neo picks up, and God wanted him to know that he is the one. If you only knew how important you are to God the Father... If you only knew that you are the one and, and if you only had the, 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 the confidence to realize that, that God has something major and important for you and I, there's a gift on the inside of us and his name is Jesus. And so many times we're waiting for something to happen when the truth is that God already made it all happen. And he wants us to be so confident in this relationship with him that when we're like fighting the devil like that, I mean, we can do something like that, right? Like, (laughs) someone bring me a chair quick, man. I'm going to do this thing, right? God wants us to be so confident to to the extent that we no longer fear the enemy. That when he comes to confront that we know the word enough, that we know the word. He said, that's why Jesus said, man, do you, do you not understand my words clearly? And that's the battle is, 
constantly trying to grasp the word of God in our minds in order for us to understand clearly his, his purpose and his plan for your life, my life. But the enemy always comes in and we know that the battle is always in our mind. I mean, you hear the different, you know, uh, scenes about how, how the, the mind and, and the conflict is like a splinter. Have you ever had a splinter? Oh my God, man, I remember just this last week, I forgot, I went fishing and, uh, and I had this old piece of wood thing and I, and man, this little piece of wood just went right in my nail. I was like, mm. have you ever had a little splinter going between your nail? That is painful. Well, let me tell you something. That is what the issues of our life, they're like splinters in our mind. And we know, we know the challenges we're dealing with. We know the stuff that we're going through, but then we do nothing about it. Point number one. Point number one, there is a difference between knowing the path and walking the path. Let's say it now spiritual. There's a dif difference between knowing the truth and walking in truth. You see, because most people know the truth, but not all people walk in the truth. And so you have to come to that place. You have to come to that reality. You see, when, when, when uh, uh, what's his name, Morphus? was coming to Neo, he was basically saying, hey, listen, uh, you got the call, you answered. You're the one that made the choice to come and know me or know the plan or know the truth. And so he's having this conversation, but Neo was struggling at first because he's saying, you know what, I don't know if I can do this because, you know what, if, if, if I do this, then I'm going to lose control of my life. But the truth is this, is that we're all out of control. And, and, and we need to give God control back again. We need to give back God the control over our life. How do I do that? I got to learn how to surrender. I got to learn how to yield to his truth. And when you learn how to yield to his truth, that's when you start to relinquish the control of your life. I don't know about you, but the times that I've tried to control things, I've made a mess of them. And God is constantly working with us as his kids to surrender, to give up. It's like you parents, you know what's best for your child. You know what? Your desire is not to see them fail or fall or, or, or mess up in life. Your desire is to see them succeed, to be prosperous, to be blessed, to have everything you didn't have. Well, that's how God the Father sees us. But the enemy begins to plant these seeds and these lies that, that you know what? If I, if I just, if I give myself to God, I don't know, I feel like I lose control. No, you want to you wanna give up control. You want God to begin to show you the truth. Are you here today? <laughs> I like this. Morpheus said, he says, you know something is wrong and it's like a splinter in your mind. That's exactly what he said. What does that say to me? It says this. Listen, you don't have to tell an alcoholic that he's an alcoholic. You, you don't need to tell a drug addict, hey, you're a drug addict. They know they're a drug addict. You don't need to tell a sinner, hey, guess what? You're sinning. I have talked with people that I've, I've shared the gospel with, and they just tell me things like, hey, you know what? Right now my life's not right. It's not clean. Let me get it right, and then I'll come to God. No, listen, they know they're sinning. They know they're sinners. But a Christian also knows when they really don't believe God. They know that. You know it. Story here. There was a, this boy named Bobby and his sister Sally. They went over on the weekend to go visit Ma, Grandpa and Grandma. And uh, Grandpa got Bobby this brand new BB gun. And, uh, and he gave him some targets to shoot at. And he said, go ahead, Bobby. Go in the backyard and go shoot away. And Bobby's all excited. And, you know, he's shooting. And he gets bored shooting at the little target. And then he looks over to the little, you know, uh, a miniature lake, and there's grandma's pet duck. And then all of a sudden, he's just kind of like looking around, and uh, he goes ahead, and he gets his little BB gun, and, and he aims at the duck, and he's like, Ugh! and he, boom, he shoots. He kills grandma's pet duck. I, I know, that's what I said. And little Sally, his sister's right there like, oh. she saw the whole thing. And so what happens? Well, you know what? He begs her, please don't say another, please don't say another. And so they go, and now they're at the dinner table. And, uh, and Grandpa comes in and says, hey, um, 
I want to take Bobby and Sally out fishing. And, and, and the kids were like, yay. But grandma was like, no, I want you to leave Sally. They can't go. I need Sally to help me washing dishes. And then she slugged on her brother and said, remember, you killed that duck. And then and he's like, and so Sally goes, Grandma, uh, Bobby wants to stay with you and wash the dishes. Right, Bobby? And Bobby's like, yeah, Grandma. And so now days go by. He's not only doing all of his chores. He's doing her chores every single day. Well, he got to the point where he got, he just, he's like, I can't do this anymore. He got just fed up. He's like, I can't do it anymore. So he goes and he walks right into the kitchen and says, Grandma, I killed your pet duck. And the grandma looks at him and smiles and says, Bobby, I know you killed my pet duck. And he's like, what? He's like, yes. I was standing in the kitchen looking out the window and I saw everything you did. But grandma said, Bobby, but the moment you did that, I said, I love you and I forgave you. Grandma, why didn't you tell me? Because I wondered how much longer you were going to allow Sally to make you her slave. And Jesus is coming to you and saying, I'm just wondering how much longer will you let Satan be the father of lies and create you as his slave? How much longer? How much longer will you be in the prison of you? When God the Father has already looked down, he saw everything. And he said, I love you, and I forgave you. He wants you to come back to his truth. Because once you come back to that father, let me tell you something. He'll lead you. He'll lead you out of lies, and he'll bring you to truth. <laughs> and so Morpheus says to Neil, you know, the problem is, is that it's the world. Ever say it's the world. Yeah. Listen, I, I get it. We live in this world. We live in this world. But he says, it's a world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. In this world is the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes. And God makes it very clear. He's like, you are not to be a, 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 a friend with this world. You are to be a friend of God. Because this world, it, it does you wrong. Look, look, Romans 12, 2, the apostle Paul said this. He says, don't copy the behavior. Everybody say, don't copy. Don't copy. See, there's too many copycats and not enough originals out there. He says, do not copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into the new person, changing the way you think. Listen, you don't have to be in sin to change the way you think. Some of us, our thinking is just so below standard. And God is wanting to bring us up to a higher level of thinking. And he says, then, everybody say then. Yes. See, you have to decide, I'm ready for change. I want change. And, and then, and then, and then you will learn to know God's will or God's path for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And so let me tell you something. When, 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 when Neil was sitting in front of, in front of uh, 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 Morpheus, he, he said to him, hey, listen, um, let's really talk now. Here's the deal. He busts out the blue pill and the, and the red pill. Did you see that? And he said, okay, um, Neil, you can take this blue pill and you can just forget about your story. And you can wake up the next day tomorrow in your own bed and you can just continue believing what you believe. Or you can take the red pill. And if you take this red pill... You will know all 
truth. And it's so interesting how so many believers today, Christians, okay, um, swallow the blue pill. And we don't change how we believe. We, we, we get saved, but there's no renewal. And so we still keep talking the same, same behavior, same attitude. I mean, once you come to Jesus, he says, I transform you. I renew the way you think. Your thinking, it changes. There's something different about you that no longer looks like this world. And so here you have that, the fact that he's trying to get us to take the red pill, which red signifies as the blood of Jesus. Jesus says, hey, come to me, all you who are heavy burdened, right? Take my yoke for it's easy. My burden is light. Man, Jesus makes things so much easier for us. He's trying to help us wash away not only the sins of our life, but the guilt the shame and the condemnation that we constantly feel that we're bombarded with by, the, by Satan with all these lies that you're not good enough. You'll never amount to anything. And then we begin to just feed on these lies and these lies become our truths and then our truths become our behaviors and then our behaviors become our beliefs and then we just keep having the same cycle. And Jesus is like, man, something's got to change. But I love it because in, in this, after he gives him the red pill, he says, now follow me. And I just thought, dang. <laughs> Jesus says, you, you, you receive me in your heart and you confess me with your mouth. Now follow me. But so many receive him but then don't follow. And then you wonder, why am I not changing? Because you're still following your pattern. Why aren't things getting better? Because you're still doing your pattern. But when you follow him, things begin to change. Let me prove it to you. Look at John 8, 32. Same, same chapter, chapter 8. Look, Jesus says in the same chapter, and you shall know the what? The and the truth will what? And the truth shall make you free. The truth shall make you. So he says when you follow me, man, stuff starts it just starts falling off of you as you spend time with But it's not just like, oh, I'm a Christian, and I follow, and I got my, my Jesus T-shirt, my, my Jesus cross, and my Jesus bumper sticker. No. No, following him, following him means that I'm now God's student. That means that now I'm, I'm, I'm someone who, who is with all intention wanting to hear his word clearly. Like, I want to learn. I want to understand what he's saying in this word. I, I'm not just, I'm not just, you know what, just playing patty cake with God. Like, like I, I want to dive completely in this word because if it's the truth that makes me free, if it's his word that begins to set me free from the different lies that I've allowed in my life, then why wouldn't I want to know that truth? Why am I taking the blue pill and not the red pill? I'll tell you why. One, one big truth is that most people don't like to face their reality. They always make excuses. But guess what? Until you're willing to take responsibility, you'll never change. You'll never change. I know it's quiet in this Presbyterian church. <laughs> I love the Presbyterians. Don't get me wrong. Point number two, <clears throat> this is very, very important. Point number two, guys, come on. Your wound can become your weapon. Your wound can become your weapon. Let me tell you something. We all experience stuff, but if you're wounded, you're going you're gonna to make that your, your core belief now. And that core belief begins to create the new person you become. Okay, because we're all becoming something whether you like it or not. And so all of a sudden when you're wounded, let's say someone betrays you, guess what happens now? Now you don't trust people. You know what? For the mess up of one, everyone pays for it. 
You know, when you're wounded by a friendship, when you're wounded in a marriage, when you're wounded with, uh, with maybe a coworker, what happens is if you're not careful, your wound then becomes your weapon. What do you mean the weapon? Well, let me tell you something. You hurt yourself. And you also hurt other people as well. What weapon, Pastor? Well, it's the weapon of unforgiveness. It's the weapon of bitterness. It's the weapon of resentment. It's the weapon of I'm angry at everybody and God. Your wound, your wound. God doesn't want you to be wounded. He said that it was by his stripes, by his wounds, you are healed. That's the truth. He says, I was pierced for your transgressions. And so who gave us the right to be wounded? Have you ever thought about that one? Like Jesus said, I became a wound for you so that you can be made free. But isn't that so hard to accept because you're the one that experienced the pain? And so if you're not careful, then the enemy already takes advantage of your trauma. And then he begins to use your trauma against you. And then when he uses the trauma against you, you begin to build a case against God and against people. And then before you know it, you're already bound. And then the world has blinded you from the truth. You guys like that or no? You guys mad at me right now? Or no? It's real quiet. I think we're a Catholic church after all, not Presbyterian. <laughs> I wonder what we're going to be next. Let me, let me show you a diagram. <clears throat> I did my scribble scrabble this morning at home. Here's what happens. So we hear the word, this is Satan. Devil. Okay. Liar. Father. Okay. And, and here's what happens. Uh, there's you. Okay. And then we're like layers. We're like layers of stuff. And, and then from you come wounds. Okay. And then our wounds become our weapon of lies. And so now we, we, we have this web of lies. Uh, can everybody see this? Or do I got to move this? And then from, from lies, we go into torment. Is that spelled right? T-O-U-R, torment. And so what happens, there's you, right? Then there's wounds. Then there's lies. Then there's torment. And, and, and Satan is just having a heyday with you. And he is trying to keep you and I from following the truth, Christ. This is what he's keeping us from. Why? Because if you knew who you were in Christ, you're dangerous. And that's Satan's greatest fear is that you would someday be so confident in your walk with God that now you are dangerous. When you, are, when you are completely loaded with the gospel of Jesus Christ, you are dangerous to the kingdom of darkness. But when you're constantly lacking confidence, identity, you are now under this playground of this enemy. And so he keeps us from following him. Because when you start following him, here's what happens. It's no longer about you. It's now about Jesus. Why? Because I'm in him and he's in me. And without him, I can do nothing. Does that make sense? So you're no longer trying to do life by yourself. You're now living life with Christ. I am hidden in Christ. And then when I start living in Jesus, you know what begins to happen? I start coming to the truth. And it's the truth that shall make you what? Free. Right. So once you start coming to the truth, what, Nick, what happens then? Then there's forgiveness. Huh? There's forgiveness. And then there's another layer. After there's forgiveness, there's peace. So God will trade in your trauma for his peace. That's what God wants to do. And so the enemy is working overtime, trying to create all these layers. And you're wondering, why am I not getting the victory? Why can I move forward? Because you know what? 
We're too busy sitting under the feet of the father of lies instead of sitting at the feet of the father of truth. And it's the truth that can make you free. But you have to want it. And, and most people are so good at talking about all their lies and parading them instead of talking about the truth. What do I mean by that? Now, let me give you the how because I think this is more. Can I get a Kleenex box up here? Please. Thank you so much. Let, let, let me do some. Sorry. So check this out. Let me show you guys something. So then, so then now, so okay, so, so go back to uh, John chapter 8, guys. Look at this. Go back to John chapter 8. So Jesus here says this. Uh, no, the first one, 40, 30. Uh, there you go, 42 through 43. And Jesus said to them, if God, your, if God were your father, you would love me. I have come here from God. I have not come on my own. God sent me. Why? See, he begins to identify who he is. So why aren't my words clear to you? Because you can't hear what I say. Next verse, guys. Keep going. You belong to your father, the devil. You want to obey your father's wishes. From the beginning, the devil was a murderer. He, was never, he never obeyed the truth. There is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his natural language. So he does this because he's a liar. In other words, come on. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Call a lie a lie. And he does this because he's a liar. He is the father of lies. But because I tell the truth, you don't believe me. You don't believe me. I'm trying to tell you the truth. So what do I do? How does this work? Okay. So here's how you start addressing some life challenges, okay? Here's how you start doing this. So you have to, so basically Jesus is saying here, I'm talking to you about two, three. It's truth versus lies. Talk about the villains, right? And so let's, let's just kind of do this. What are some of the typical thoughts that we get in our mind? Just throw them out there. What the heck? Let's do it quickly. I'm nobody. I'm, 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 I'm a nobody. I'll never amount to anything. Okay, well, hold on, slow down. Okay, uh, do you have a name? Yes. Okay, do you exist? So you got to be a somebody if you exist. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, uh, uh, do people know you? Yes. Do you have a job? Yes. Okay, uh, do people care about you? Yes. yes. Okay, so are you a nobody? No. So that was a lie. And now as you begin to qualify, then you can quantify and come to this place and be like, you know what? I'm not a nobody. I'm a somebody, right? And so you're just like, okay, wait a minute. What, what has happened to me? What's another, another thing that we all deal with? Come on. What if I fail? What if I fail? What if I fail? What if, what if I start this business and it just falls apart? What if, oh my God, what if? And so we start talking future tense. Okay, so how do I qualify that? Okay, uh, I'm sorry, but do you live in the future? No. I mean, if you do, please tell me, what year do you live in? <laughs> no, no. You have to ask yourself, okay, well, um, have you been successful before at anything? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Uh, is failure a bad thing? No. no. No, not everybody wins all the time, right? I mean, unless you're the Patriots and, you, you know. <laughs> just throw that in there. <laughs> just, just saying. <laughs> Don't hate. <laughs> and so you begin to just, you have to go through the process and say, you know what? No, that, that's, that's not a, I, I, I. I may not win all the time, but I'm not going to fail always either. Like, why? See, when you believe that you're going to fail, that now has become your core belief, which means that you'll never do anything. Why? Because you're holding on to a lie that hasn't even happened yet. So you're already, you're already, you are already cheating you out <laughs> before you even got started. What's another like? Quickly, come on. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. We already did that one. How about I'll never change? 
Ah, I can never, he'll never change. She'll never change. Okay, well, um, have you ever changed your clothes? Well, sure. I mean, you literally have to come, you literally have to come to that simplicity, okay? Tell me one thing that you changed in your life that was pretty, like for me, I smoked for 11 years two packs of cigarettes a day. I changed with God's help. I came to church as a believer, and I was just, you know, praise God, and then we'd drive out the car and <laughs> glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The Lord is good. Praise God, right? And, and, and I remember I'd be, I'd be at work, and then I'd be in the corner in the smoker section, right? Then the employees, and oh, it sucked every time. You know, and I'd be sharing the gospel like, hey, man, aren't you a Christian? Yeah, then why are you smoking? Like, dang, okay. <laughs> and so I knew it was time for change. And so you have to come back to this place where you have to ask yourself, like, what is it that you're dealing with? You know what, uh, I, I'm afraid. I don't know what you're dealing with. I, I don't know what your challenges are. But, but, but you have to go back to John chapter 8. In verse 42 and 43, and, and you have to ask yourself, okay, wait a minute. Who's my father? Because Jesus said, if you really loved me, you would believe me. And isn't that half the battle is believing God? God didn't say it would be easy when you come to your truths, but he did say it would be possible to be healed of them. The hard part is accepting your reality. That's the hard part. Why? Because you're coming clean. You're saying, God, I mean, God already saw it anyway. He saw you, sh he sh he saw you shoot the pet duck already. Stop pretending like it didn't happen. It happened. Whatever trauma happened, it happened, guys. It happened. Am I saying, get over yourself? No, I'm saying... Let's come back to God and let's begin to qualify. Wait a minute. This lie has held me bondage long enough. And now I'm ready for freedom. Because whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Bow your head, close your eyes. Father, I thank you so much for, for your word. And I pray that each one of us, everybody look at me real quick and, 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 and open your two hands. Blue pill, go like this, blue pill, and say red pill. You need to take the gospel pill. Take the gospel pill. The gospel of Jesus Christ is good news. Exchange it for the lies. Get rid of those lies and say, I take the gospel. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.